This video is going to show you how to calculate torques using only force and distance. This is something you would typically, typically do when doing statics, uh, showing the second condition of equilibrium. So to begin with, I've got a beam, so beam suspended in the air. The beam has some kind of mass. All the way to the beam is located at the center of gravity, also called the center of mass on the surface of the Earth, at the same location on the surface of the Earth. Because we're talking about forces, I'll refer to it as the center of gravity. So that's what the weight of the beam is. That's that little mark on the left-hand side, one meter from the edge. And I've got the two cables at 70 and 50 degrees, and the beam is six meters long. To begin with, to solve this problem, I'm going to draw an extended free body diagram. So I'll start with a stick instead of a dot for the body, and I'll put the forces at the right locations. So the stick is six meters long. Now, when drawing an extended free body diagram, you need to include distance and force. So one meter at in the weight of the beam. And then on the right-hand side, I've got the tension to the right cable, left hand side, tension to the left cable. Now for the sake of this exercise, I need to pick a point where I'm going to uh, find all the center of mass, or find all the torques about. So that point that I'm going to work about, called the pivot point, the fulcrum, or the axis of rotation, I'm just going to randomly, because it's an exercise, I'm going to randomly choose a point two meters from the right hand side. So that's where I'm going to find the torques. Now I'll get rid of the, all this other stuff and just focus on the extended free body diagram. Torque, abbreviated by the symbol tau, is equal to the component of force perpendicular to the displacement. In other words, when I draw the force vector and I extend the line, I need to draw a line between my pivot point and the force vector extension that's perpendicular to each other. So here's what I mean. If I want to find the torque about TR, I'm going to draw a long line just to extend the vector so I can see it real easily. And then I'll draw a line between X and the blue line that's going to be perpendicular to the blue line. That's going to look like this green line here. So that's 90 degrees. Now if I want to find the length of the green line, I can use the law of sines. And because it's 90 degrees and I use the law of sines, I know the length of the green line is just going to be equal to 2 meters sine 50. So great, I can do that. But here's the thing. When I'm solving these problems a lot of the time, I've already broken this up into components by summing up the forces in the x direction and summing up the forces in the y direction. So I've already got those pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and show the torques using those pieces instead. So if I look at TR and I look at the horizontal component of TR, it's going to be TR cosine 50. The vertical component is going to be TR sine 50. The problem is the tail of TR sine 50. It's in the wrong place on my extended free body diagram. It needs to be at the base where TR touches the body. So in other words, it's got to be all the way over here on the right hand side. Now I can kind of see what's going on. So I'll first start by looking at the torque due to TR cosine 50. So if I draw an extended array, I can see it goes right through the pivot point. Any force that goes either to or from the pivot point does not exert a torque because there's no moment arm. So that's not going to do a torque. But TR sine 50, if I extend it up so I can see it a little bit easier, I can draw a line perpendicular between X and TR sine 50 that's uh, 90 degrees. So now all I need is to link that line, 2 meters, times the amount of force, which is TR sine 50. So the torque due to TR sine 50 is TR sine 50 times 2 meters, which is TR sine 50 newton meters. And torque doesn't have its own unit, it's just a newton meter. Great, now I've got to figure out if it's positive or negative. So I need to look at the rotation. In other words, about the point X, how would this force alone cause the extended free body to rotate? So I'll use the pencil test. I'll take a pencil and I'll hold it up, and then this is really easy. In fact, it's so easy, I want to get my dog to help me. So this is my dog, Sophie. She's going to help me out with this. All right, so first thing you need to do is hold down a paw at the pivot point. Excellent. Your next paw goes where the force is applied on the pencil. Perfect. Now push in the direction of the force. Good job. Now I can see how the pencil has been rotated. So it's going to rotate in this direction counterclockwise, and a counterclockwise rotation gives us a positive torque. So I'm not going to do anything to the torque symbols I have down below. Great. Now it's time to look at another force. So we'll look at TL. TL's horizontal component is TL uh, cosine 70. Vertical component is TL sine 70. And you can see I just slid it over into the right spot just like I did before. The right spot being where TL touches the extended free body. Now if I extend TL cosine 70, I can see it goes right through my pivot point so it doesn't exert a torque because there's no moment arm. If I extend TL sine 70, I can see that I can draw a perpendicular line between TL and my pivot point where the X is located. So now I've got to find the length of this green line. Well, the beam is six meters long. The green line is two meters from the right. That means, the, I mean, the 
the x is, so that means the green line has got to be 4 meters long. So the torque is equal to TL sine 70, that's the blue line, times the distance, that's the green line, which is 4 meters. And that's equal to 4 TL sine 70 newton meters. Now the signs. Okay, pencil test. And again, with the help of my dog Sophie, we'll figure this out. So Sophie, put your paw on the pivot point. Or actually, let's put it on the force this time. And then we'll put your other paw on the pivot point. So there we are on the force and the pivot point. And now move the pencil in the direction the force is moving. Excellent. So now I can see the rotation of the pencil. I can see that it's moving in a clockwise rotation. And a clockwise rotation means a negative torque. So torque is determined by the way that my beam would spin, or my pencil in this case. If the pencil spins clockwise, it's a negative torque. Counterclockwise is a positive torque. In other words, counterclockwise, like through the quadrants on a graph, first quadrant to second to third to fourth quadrant. This means, because this is a negative torque, that I've got to add the negative sign on my um, torques down below. So I'll put in some negative signs. There we are, all set. Final force, the weight of the beam acting at the center of gravity. So I'll draw an extended ray so I can see it a little bit easier. And I can draw a line that's perpendicular. And this one's nice, no trig to do. It's kind of given to me. The length of it's going to be 3 meters times the weight of the beam. So the torque is equal to the weight of the beam times 3 meters, which is 3 weight of the beam newton meters. And that's the torque to the center of mass. Now I've got to find the sign. To find the sign, I'll use the pencil test again. And for the third time, we'll ask for the dog's help. So here's Sophie. All right, so put your hand on the pivot point, or paw. Now take your other paw, put it where the force is, and push it in the direction the force is going. There we go. Actually, it's pulling it in the force, the force's direction. Good job, Soph. All right, so Soph has showed us that it's a rotation that's going to be in the counterclockwise direction, and a counterclockwise direction is positive. Because it's positive, that means I don't need to add anything to my expression for the torque. It'll be a positive torque in this case. Now, when you're doing this, of course, you don't always have Sophie around, so just use your fingers when rotating the pencil.